some ambitious bets? Well, we decided to build a VR MMO <laughs> for one thing. People assume that you need to be this giant 500 person studio with a $100 million budget. If you don't have that, then you can't do it. We just set out to prove that that's not true. What makes us different from a regular game studio is that we're a small team, a diverse team, and a remote team. Andy is first and foremost my friend, but he's the CEO and co-founder of Ramen VR. I'm Lauren Frazier, and I'm the CTO and co-founder at Ramen VR. Colin is the lead game designer. Kat's our lead concept artist. Jordan is one of our rock star engineers. Jessica is our lead environment artist. And together, we bring the game to life. The inspiration for Zenith, the game, was that Lauren and I were both big fans of MMOs and JRPGs, and we had a lot of our formative experiences in games like those. So we were excited to be able to take that and bring it into the world of VR. Virtual reality MMO, I don't think it's really been done with a team this size before. So I think that Unity has really been the catalyst for all this. It allows us to spin up in the editor quickly. It allows us to profile and see what's going wrong with performance quickly. We use plastic to manage our files, and a lot of art assets are things that we buy from the asset store. So Unity really enables us to develop much faster. The most important thing about creating a new fantasy world is just thinking about the emotional impact that it'll leave on a player. Games that make you think Games that make you feel are really important. We take a lot of inspiration from the environments around us. I love to kind of go on hikes. For me, it allows a chance to meditate and be reflective. A lot of times we like to just go and walk. And those kind of things have found their way into the game. Hopefully when people experience Zenith and they enter the Amorite Forest for the first time, they'll get that same sense of awe and peacefulness that they might have gotten if they were wandering the Redwoods in Northern California. I would to see more elevation in general. My favorite part of the process is definitely when you're at the early phases, brainstorming ideas with the team. When we first started the game, we only had the ability to run around the world, and we didn't even think about adding gliding or climbing. But it was after kind of exploring the game and really thinking about what VR can do differently, we decided to include both, and everybody really loved it. The one thing that I love is flying. This new version is much more freeform, depending on how your hands are turned, so it feels very organic. We really had to adapt the environments and incorporate new elements to support that. I'd say in general, like everything almost is twice as difficult to do in VR just because you have to make so much more interaction. All those interactions have to feel good. Being able to prototype really quickly was super important, and Unity allowed us to do that at a rate that wouldn't have been possible with other engines. Dots has really allowed us to do things where we can have literally like hundreds of thousands of objects without compromising performance. Compared to the mono behavior workflow, it's really just like a new window into like a new era of, of games. You guys hungry? I'm gonna cook you guys some food. Building a community is just as important as building the actual game itself. It's pretty much the reason why you would choose to play online versus offline. There's a lot of online games that get reputations for being not necessarily a place that you would feel safe being yourself. I think that for us, we really want people to feel like they can participate in the community. So whether that means that you want to look a certain way, sound a certain way, act a certain way, whatever you want to do, you can feel empowered to really be yourself. Hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> we use VVox with spatialized audio. As people come closer to you, they get louder and you can hear if people are behind you, in front of you. So it just, it adds to this feeling of realism. You could just turn to the person next to you and say, hey, do you want to do something? You guys want to do some swimming? Yeah, I didn't even know that. I think just building different systems in the game that allow these kinds of like experiences to happen is really what like makes it feel special for me. As the technology gets better and better, we want to try to be up there on the forefront of trying to push forward the medium. It's something I've been dreaming of ever since I was a kid. Seeing positive interactions gives me a lot of hope about the trajectory of the game. That totally worked. Thank you. <laughs> My hope is that we can create a place that is vibrant and it's fun, but it's respectful and safe. Yes, it's a video game, but lessons in the game, they still translate and they still apply to the real world. If we can do something like that, that gives that kind of experience to a lot of people, that becomes a cultural touchstone. 
My hope is that for games in the future, they become more inclusive and more welcoming, and that they allow people to truly express themselves in ways that they can't do in real life.